studio and I come in here at night after all is said and done. I come here in the morning before I start my day when I make my lemon water, hot water with lemon, organic lemon, and then the peel in the lemon, in the water. And then I come in here and I do paintings. Um, I do these watercolors. I work on this Luden, L-U-D-E-N, Luden art board, because if you work flat too much, then your neck is bent over and it could hurt. You can get a stiff neck, so I work on an angle. I work in watercolors. I love to do pen and ink. I love to do pen drawings and markers, but I have an obsession with watercolors. Hi, Crystal from Vegas. Hi, Roller Girl. We got OG in the house, so we're gonna paint and we're gonna hang out. But I wanted to tell you, in these days where you're not always gonna have a great day, right? Some days are going to be harder than others. You're gonna pick up on uh, what I call OPE, other people's energy. You start to wonder if you're doing the right thing because of other people's belief systems, OPBS. Um, you get what I call wrenches thrown in your ideas. Like, let's say you have this idea, you're moving forward, your intuition told you to do it, your heart told you, you're excited about it. To me, the only way to make decisions is listening to my heart and my intuition. I use my head when I need to figure out how to get from point A to point B or how to make something happen. For example, I want to do um, an Oracle deck, right? And then I was sitting there on the Red Rocks in Sedona and um, I was just kind of getting ideas, like opening up inspiration to get ideas for two different Oracle deck ideas. And I let the I, I let everything flow, so it's really channeled, it's creativity, it's not head. But when you need to use your head, for example, is when you need to um, figure out the size of the Oracle deck and measure, when you need to watch something on Skillshare or Domestica to learn how to set it up in your iPad or how to learn how to do it. I watched this woman last night on how to make you know, you take a nine by 12 sheet of paper, you do some kind of beautiful artwork on the back of it, you use a paper cutter and you cut, you know, this, the, the cards and then you have nine cards and you can do that for as many as you want. And so you can do them by hand, but I also wanna know how to do them digitally. So next I'll be watching her other class, which is a little more technical on how to do something I'm not entirely sure I know how to do, but that's when I will need my head. Okay, so the idea of using our brains to make the decisions about what to do isn't the best. We wanna use our heart and our intuition. And the way we know if something's correct is if we get a lift. Like I get a lift, a lifted feeling when something excites me. And then when I tell myself or my head tells myself, you can't do that, or you really shouldn't do that. And if I feel sinking, then I know that the yes was the correct answer and the brain's gonna have to catch up. The brain can be used to help me figure out how to do it. This happened with my van. I was like, it's not, it's not necessarily practical to do what I did to get a van, but I remember when we were there negotiating and they declined the offer. And I remember sitting in my car just feeling like my heart sunk. And I was like, oh my God. And then I asked the pendulum, I work with a pendulum always, I call it my pendy. And it was like, should I get it? And it was like a big yes. And I was like, all right. So I followed my heart and my head fit, helped me figure out how to do the deal. So I want us all to consider that a lot of times we do start to follow our hearts and we do listen to ourselves. And then all of a sudden through the mouths of somebody else, I call it like a wrench. Like I love my van too. We're taking off soon again in it. Um, there, I look at like, it almost felt energetically like when someone starts to say it's a bad idea, it's like they're chucking a metal wrench at your idea or your head. like. No, sometimes you need to be in your own space to figure out if something's correct or not. So about the title of this video, How to Have a Happy Day. One day on Instagram, I shared a reel 
I did a reel, once in a while I do them, and it was about a happy sandwich. And people, hi Ruby Rose, hi my lovies. A happy sandwich is when you start your day off with something that makes you happy, and then you end the day with something that makes you happy, and then before you know it, you'll have other little slices in there of things that make you happy, right? So if watercoloring makes me happy, clearly, then I do it, even if it's for 10 minutes in the morning. And then I do it at night and I'm reminded like, oh, that feels so good. It's a good day if I get to start with this and I get to end with this. And then I take a bath and doing art at night soothes me. So one way to have a happy day is to have a happy sandwich. The slices of bread on either side need to be the things that make you happy. So what are they? What are they for you guys? You didn't, I love my van too. Her name is Vanny B. Beverly, my mom and her B. Beverly used to have these flowers, these um, silk flowers and artificial flowers. And she'd always put these little teeny bumblebees on them. So bumblebees remind me and my daughter of my mom, Beverly B. And then when Herbie was passing, I said, how are you gonna connect with me when you're on the other side? And he looked up and there was a painting of a butterfly and he said, butterflies and bumblebees. So Vanny B is her name. So do you guys know what you could do? Sorry. Do you guys know what you could do in the morning to make yourself happy? Maybe you, maybe you make a tonic. Maybe you draw or you write. Really highly recommended to get out the static that's in your brain by doing stream of consciousness writing. Natalie Goldberg, who wrote Writing Down the Bones, one of my favorite teachers of all time, I took a writing workshop with her in Taos, New Mexico, probably 19 years ago, more. Oh my God, more, 21 years ago. It changed my life. I painted something that was a symbol from that time. There are these little angels that I found on a wall in the place I was staying at and they freed me. And so when I paint those angels, they're symbols of freedom. I'm going to be doing little tutorials on how to paint the squares that I do, how to um, paint these freedom angels, how to um, do mandalas, that's coming soon. I'm gonna set myself up, you'll see the work, not me. Maybe me too. And we're gonna do some tutorials because, um, and art, art journaling. One of the ways in which I process moods is through painting. So when I paint colors of the mood that I'm in and I allow myself to express myself with imagery and or colors of that mood, it eventually shifts. I get revelations, I see what ends up in the drawing, what colors, like what things are in my hand, around my neck, falling from my hands in the imagery. So I wanna teach you guys how to do it because it's, you don't have to be an artist to do it, but you, everybody is. Taking a yoga bath. So tell me what a yoga bath is with Epsom salts. Taking, um, you know what that reminds me of? Abhyanga, which is in, in Ayurvedic practice of massaging your body with oils, before you get in the bath, oh my gosh, that's heaven. I'm gonna do that tonight. Um, yeah, every day, every night I have a bath and when I don't, it doesn't feel, sometimes I'll, sorry. <laughs> you don't even see my hand coming in. So, we are hanging out. Oh, yoga stretching in the tub, that's beautiful. So I got this new color I wanna try out. Um, I don't know why. Sometimes I like to use inks. I like to use Dr. P.H. Martin's inks. And I always like pinks. I'm a magenta fan. So I got this beautiful palette and I put some of this iridescent orchid in it and I want to play. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it set up that we can, um, I don't know what I did, thank you for what, I don't even remember what I said or did, but let's do a little bit here. Let's move this, because this one is one I'm working on, and I, 
painted this row one day and then all the colors got jumbled up. And yesterday I was like, I bet I could figure out exactly what colors that I used. And I think I did a good, I mean, look at all the colors. I have so many paints, but I figure it out mostly close enough. And I did this row last night. So I'm working on this piece. Um, and I love color and I love gold, color and gold, you guys. So let's, paint, let's post up a new picture. My hair, you, thank you, I blew up the bangs today. Sometimes it's just wild and crazy and really messy. This is somewhat messy. I learned how to cut my hair with a razor uh, from, what paper do I want? I'll use this. Um, Jane Matthews, Edo Salon, E-D-O. You can look up Jane, J-A-Y-N-E Matthews. She has a class where she teaches you how to trim your bangs with a razor. And I was doing that during the whole situation of the past couple of years. And then one day, I think Uranus was transiting my first house of Uranus. Oh no, something happened with the planet Uranus and all of a sudden I'm like, I need change. And you guys know I love change. If you look back on any of my videos, you see there was red hair, there's blonde hair, there's short hair, there's long hair, there's all kinds of whatevers. But all of a sudden I was like, I need to layer it. I need to layer it. And I remembered that she had sent me her video. Um, she had sent it to me as a gift. Um, because I shout her out a lot on Instagram. I think she was like, I'll get you the other. Yeah, Jane Matthews. And so I got half hour into it, maybe halfway through it. She was practicing on her own hair and I just went and I got the razor and I started doing it. And over a matter of, I would say in all honesty, three weeks, like I'd cut a little bit, then I'd cut a little bit more. And I went too short, but now it's been a couple months and the way it grew in, it just grew in great. So she from having to get your hair cut anywhere. I mean, you know, I didn't know who to cut my hair. I didn't want to, um, you know, worry about it. And I did it. And I feel liberated and it's fun. And now it's growing a little bit in. So, you know, the shape changes and you can, you can, you know, if you want this piece to flip up, you just kind of carve a little petal in here. There's little things you could do, but it's good for now. I think it's good for today. I have to put the razor away because I'll go like crazy. It's just fun. I love to do it. So thank you for that. So now we're going to tape up. I'm going to get a taller tripod for here, but why not? Why don't we just hang out and play? I want to do a hand painted tarot deck. I started doing, um, these little cards from Legion paper, little little pads. So I paint them and then I'm just gonna have a deck, oh, a deck of cards. I just paint one a day, one or two a day. And then I'll do some whatevers. You cut your hair today too? Isn't it so fun? It's the best ever, really. It's scary and it's fun. So now let's take some of this pinky pink, pinky ink, the pink ink. I need glasses and I don't know where my glasses are. Here they are. You guys, um, I have a code for these. These are Caddis glasses. They're the coolest readers in the whole world. These are progressive so I can see you guys and when I look down I can see. And they make they make wearing readers cool. Oh, this is a very pretty color. I like it. I think um, in the crayon box when I was little, if you asked me my favorite color, I would have always said magenta. There's just something so vibrant and pretty and juicy. It reminds me of hairs. pears. I like just doing these. This is my meditation, painting these little squares. You'll see them if you're on Instagram. I show them all the time. And I encourage people to do it because it feels so good. And you can paint the colors of the day of the week. You could paint the colors of your mood. You could paint 
the colors of love, pinks and greens, heart, heart healing colors. You could paint blues, greens for new growth. I mean, I have so many I could show you. Do you wanna see? Hello. So uh, let me see. Um, hold on. Well, I took all the good pies, but I'll show you the little pies I'm making. I will show you. Oops. Coming. I do them on cheap paper. I do them on fancy paper. I have some of these for sale on my website. I put some up. Nobody knows about them. <laughs> they're hidden, but they're lovely. This is a fun one. This is a, this is greens and I made it shiny because I'll tell you why. I painted on black paper, but I was like, no, it needs to be shiny. And then I ordered this gloss medium and then it came out like this and I love it. So I have a bigger one Anyway, these are the cards I'm painting that I'm gonna glossy paint. I'm just painting some cards and I'm making my own Oracle deck to play with. And then when I love a background, I'll know that maybe, you know, the whole deck needs to have this as the background, or maybe it's this as the background. Depending, right? Or the pinks, or the blues or all of them, <laughs> the yellows. <laughs> well, this is an odd one I did last night. You just play. You get the idea, right? So I will um, put a clear medium over these. I'm gonna put some words on the back. I'll show it when I'm done. But you get the idea, make yourself happy. Do something just because it makes you happy. That's what I do. And then it'll turn into something. One day I just started painting these squares. I was doing art, 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 doobies, 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 my art. And then all of a sudden the squares appeared. And I was like, that's really fun. You just feel um, like they're not for anything. They're just for me. And then I think that's a really nice way to go about art. Like, you're not really concerned. You're just doing something that makes you happy. I don't think we do enough of that. We're always so busy, like, how can I sell it? I love to get things out into the world. I love to make products that people can enjoy, of course. But sometimes you just got to do it because it just feels good. You know? And that will lead to something. I think that's with anything in life and it goes with the beginning of this video. Like if you want to be happy, do the things that make you happy. Not for any other reason than they make you happy and then the answer will come through that. I think our hearts and our intuition guide us to places that our soul wants to go. We can say that again. You guys can quote me on that. Our hearts and our intuition leads us, lead us to where our souls want to go. Our heads can't wrap our heads, kind of have to figure stuff out. Our heads want to, you know, protect. The fear protects. Other people who try to stop us from doing things, either projecting their own fears or they're worried about our safety or they see something we don't. But in the end, we really need to make our own mistakes anyway. So the one thing, thank you. So the one thing I will say that can help you to avoid and avert disastrous mistakes is following your North Node. So you want to know your North Node because it really spells out what your soul wishes. Our hearts lead us where our souls want to go. That's really it, really. Thank you for writing that. <laughs> so if you think about it, I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? Mm. I was painting. You guys will remind me what I was saying. I've done that before. How do you know? Uh, the North Nodes. 
how do you know? How do you know what not to do and what to do? How do you know what voice to listen to? When you shut out everybody else's voice, one best way to shut out everybody else's voice is to know what your soul wishes for you. So when you come into this life, you've had other lifetimes, at least that's what I believe, past lifetimes, over and over again, you are your south node. And to balance it out, you've gotta be your north node, the sign of your north node. So for example, my north node is Taurus, which means in many past lifetimes, I was Scorpio, the survivor, the oracle, the seer, the slave. The, there's a million ways in which we had to survive Scorpio south nodes. And in this lifetime, to balance out all of that Scorpio, it's like what you drag, it's the karmic baggage you drag from past lifetimes into this lifetime. And your family knows you as your south node. When you go through your Saturn return, you end up being um, hopefully on the other side of it. When you go through the portal, you are opposite. You are your north node. You get that north node calling at about age 30. And then you are looking very different. What you, if you are following your north node, which is a reach and a stretch and it's growth and it's not easy to do, but it's what's needed because like you're heavy, like I would be heavy in Scorpio. And in order to balance it out as a human, I need to do Taurus things, painting, nature. Believe me, I've got it down. When I first heard about the north nodes, I was like, what? This is like a fast track to my intuition when I'm doing readings for other people. This literally spells out what they need to do more of or where to catch the less than lovely behavior. Because if I'm doing Scorpio stuff that's not like the best, there's certain things we get to take with us, gifts, right? I'm a seer, I'm gonna keep that. But I'm not gonna get involved in drama. I'm not gonna get trying to fix other people like a boyfriend. You know, I'm gonna like keep my eyes on my own plate. So when you know that, it just helps you you make decisions and I don't understand why we weren't taught decision making in school. I don't understand why we weren't taught boundaries in school. I'm interested in all the things that weren't taught in school and I want to teach them. But in any case, knowing my North Node has helped me, my North Node sign in Taurus. Knowing that my North Node is in the ninth house of Sag helps me so much. It means I can do beauty, but I also got to get on the road. I got to go, I got to go see places and people and when I do that people want to watch me remember the trips to India and when I went myself and France and all the places I've been then the third piece the trifecta is the midheaven and that is the course I just put out and that is literally spells out the legacy you are here to leave behind when you go it spells out how people see you how you'll be remembered and it spells out what you need to get out of your own it is invaluable. I'm doing my midheaven right now. I'm doing my tour and I'm doing my ninth house because I'm talking about things that we probably wish were taught in school. So you can look all of this up on my website. Just saying. It's really helpful. Really, really helpful. Taurus North Node in the seventh. Hey, Lauren. Hi. Oh, we got it. See, we're, when you have the same North Node as someone, you're, when you rise up, they rise up. So you want to support your fellow North Nodies. <laughs> Create art and it leads to something. It's so true. The North Node is invaluable. Do you? Yeah, I'm glad you know. You've been listening because you know it's in the seventh house of partnership. Of, of um, When you think about it, you've doubled up on Venus. You have Taurus which is ruled by Venus, so you gotta be Venusian. And then you have um, the seventh house, which is Libra, which is ruled by Venus as well. So it's a different kind of, um, it's, it's harmony and beauty and balance and justice and partnership, which you're doing, because I see your name is partnered. You have a partnership name. So I have to add gold because there has to be gold or silver. There has to be some kind of, it's a thing. It's not complete without some sparkle. <laughs> so you guys get a set of watercolors, cheap ones, doesn't matter. Cheap, it doesn't matter what you use and we're gonna start doing art, okay? Is there anything anybody wants to say before I hang up? Oh, I do. 
<laughs> I want to say that I have two videos waiting for me to edit them and post them, which I need to do, and that I would love to be using my camera more. Actually, I know how to use it. We're gonna go on adventures. We're gonna not only do lives here. I noticed that the live videos don't stay. They don't get posted on the main page. You have to look for them, but that's okay. But little by little, you just take little steps at a time. You know, you can't do everything all at once and you don't want to not, you don't want to not do something because it's not perfect or you're not ready or you don't know everything, right? Like part of life is learning and showing the journey is fun. Like showing the journey is fun. Sharing the journey is fun. You don't have to wait till you're an expert. You don't have to wait until you know everything about the camera before you use it or whatever. I look forward to hanging out with you more. Me too, and everyone. There's gonna be more and more and more. So, there's gonna be decks and coloring and... I think when I'm ready to make the deck, I'll ask on Instagram, which is the favorite, or here. People love this pink color. I, I love that too. I don't know, I think they're all fun. I love color. My favorite colors, I'd have to say, are this aqua blue, like this, it's like a robin's egg blue. That blue, and then the magenta pink. Those are my favorites. Those are my favorite colors right there. Get your favorite colors and just do blobs of paint. It doesn't matter, write words, do blobs. Just express yourself because I think we need more of that. So thank you for the thumbs up. Pink and green, those are heart colors. Green, pinks. Yeah, me too. So purples, unicorn colors. <laughs> I never thought of it like that. This is, thank you, Money Bunch, Honey Bunch, I can't see your name, but I put my glasses on. But I will say, this sweatshirt is so old. It has paint on it, it's vintage. It was vintage when I got it. I don't even know, I've had it forever. And it's like, it's like an old friend, like an old friend. And I didn't know I was gonna be making a video, me and my old friend, but thank you. This is like, so soft. There's a song about that. Things that work. I think it's called Things That Work and I don't know if it's Chris Christopherson singing it. Things That Work, it's so great. The kind of stuff you don't hang on the wall. It's like the stuff you use, the things you lean on, the things you lean on that work and they're good. That's, that's a great sentiment. Stuff that works. So, and friends that are there for you no matter what, and your true blues, your true blue things, your true blue sweatshirts, your true blue friends, your true blue whatever it is. It doesn't have to be fancy, but it's there for you. These are my true blues. Like this is just, they're there for me. They, they, I put on music and I just play with the colors and that's really what it is. So it's play. I hope you do it. I'm gonna see you guys very, very soon and you should be seeing a video from me post shortly about my second camping experience in Arizona. Big hugs, get your greens on, get your colors on, and I'll see you soon.